All right, guys, one second. Just getting things rolling here. It works awesome. All right, let me share this. Share. Almost ready. Bumping into stuff. All right. Get this set up. Looks like we're rocking. Come on, Twitch. You could do it. Twitch not working. Come on, Twitch. Looks like Facebook is going. Can you guys see me on Twitch if anybody's over there? Looks like uh, YouTube's working. Hmm. That's weird. Looks like it is working. All right. I was just on the wrong page. <laughs> okay. I'm not. Okay. Anyway, anybody over at Twitch, please let me know if it's working there or not. Okay. There we go. All right. Hey, Neil, you is it working? Is Twitch working? Had to wait for the ad. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, sorry about that little hiccup. Can you guys hear me okay? Hey, how you guys doing? My, my ad's still playing too. Stinking ads. Hopefully you can't hear it. It doesn't look like it. Looks like you can only hear me. Awesome. Thanks, Neil. Okay, so let's get this rocking. Um, so um, I found this really cool character this morning when I was looking around. Um, now a lot of people ask me where I get my concepts from, like where, how do I find them? And the answer is, um, I just I usually look on Pinterest. So I have a Pinterest board that's just like you know, uh, inspirational drawings or concepts that people have done that I just follow and add to my Pinterest board. And then the way Pinterest works is you can click into one of those images that you like and it will show you more of similar versions. So um, I just kind of start digging and digging until I see something uh, that, that looks like something I want to model. So <laughs> that's how I usually find these things. Okay. So now this one is interesting because he's in four different expressions and I'm going to model him in a neutral expression and then possibly push him into some of these expressions after the fact. So uh, I just want to, uh, yeah, just start blocking this guy out. He's really fun, really interesting, very squishy, squashy, a uh, lot of expressions. So um, hopefully he'll, he'll turn out okay. I need to kind of dig in there and guess what he would look like in his neutral pose, which this side, profile version gives me a lot of information and this kind of this front uh, worried or curious version <laughs> okay so here we go I'm gonna divide this once and delete the lower okay then um, I'm I think I'm going to just um, start by pushing his mouth in Oh, hey, Kevin, I saw that you signed up today. So welcome. Thank you very much. Awesome. Very, very cool. Hooray, hooray. So 
let's see. Um, I think I might just shrink that. I'm just starting with the mouth, and then I'll stick the nose on here in a minute. And again, this is not the typical way I work. I mean, it's sort of typical, but not, not exactly the way I work every time. So I'm essentially just going to make a polygroup right here where the mouth is going to be, just on this sphere. I'm just I'm trying to just get the base geometry there so I can just push it around. That's what I'm after. Grab the Z modeler, and I'll just um, polygroup all. I'm just going to push that in a couple times. All right. Just enough. Maybe I'll make it pretty deep this time for him because his mouth in this open pose is pretty dang big. So, okay. Now, what you can do is hide the rest, turn on double, and you can actually see what it looks like on the inside of the mouth. Hey, me, how's it going? What's up, David? Um, so, then I can grab inflate. But since I'm working on the reverse of the normals, it's going to deflate if I if I paint on this, if I had my spotlight projection turned on, it's actually gonna shrink it. So I need to hold down Option or Alt to make it expand. And then I can smooth it down to even out these polygons. And it is kind of a mess right now until I uh, Z remesh it, but that's kind of what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this. Hey, Havad, how's it going? I don't know if that's how you say your name or not. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. All right. And I want to, um, before I Z remesh this, I'm just gonna add all the other pieces and parts really quick, including, um, I'm, I think I'm just gonna go into, uh, Sculptress mode pretty early. I've been doing that lately. Who won the monthly challenge and what do they win? <laughs> so I read that in an Arnold Schwarzenegger voice. Who won the challenge and what did they win? <laughs> um, oh, it's a bit low. Anybody else verify that? Is it low? Turn it up a little bit. I can move it closer to my face here. <laughs> um... So we, I haven't decided who's won the challenge yet. Usually it takes me a while, sometimes a long time. <laughs> the last challenge kind of went haywire, but um, the, uh, so what do they win? For now, basically they're going to win, uh, ex well, I hate to say, <laughs> I hate to say this, but they're gonna be out in my blog and on my Facebook page and that kind of stuff. And I've got a brand new community that is going live pretty soon and it has a top row so they'll all be across the top row as winners and they'll get uh, a badge so like a, a winner badge kind of a thing that goes in the community so um so essentially bragging rights and exposure that kind of stuff so and they get to skill up they get to level up in their skill right the, that's that's the biggest thing that's what people are here for it's the biggest thing is uh giving people a reason to sculpt and something to sculpt so okay so let's um turn on sculptors pro and i th i'm just gonna start yeah that's pretty good uh, this is called tessimating it essentially by hand it's just turning this these quads into triangles um, and then I'm just trying to work out some groups and let's get this nose in here. Thanks. Yeah, it was the most participated challenge I've done. Um, and if you guys are wondering what we're talking about, I, I run an online course called the 3D Character Workshop. And you can find it over on the 3D Character Workshop if you're interested in joining us. The... And basically, once per quarter, about, I do a student challenge. And sometimes we have non-official student challenges every month 
that one of my students runs. Um, but the official challenge, um, they're quarterly. So um, I'm not working on any specific version. I'm making a neutral pose of this guy to start. That's a good question though. Um, so what was I talking about? So uh, yeah, so I offer a challenge once a month because the the course is lifetime access so there aren't any real deadlines so i wanted to create something that would give the students a deadline and i came up with the idea of doing challenges so it kind of gives the students a reason to create some characters and the challenge was uh this quarter was um just doing character blockouts and the theme was sa saturday morning cartoons so students went crazy had a ton of fun blocked out a, a whole bunch of characters and it's really interesting to see how far you can actually get with a character just staying in block, block out phase. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, Jorge, I just, uh, my recommendation is to just uh, get sculpting and just start watching videos like these, like my live stream or, and other streamers on the Pixelogix website or the Pixelogix live stream, just like you're doing now. And then just practice and keep going. Um, and I was just talking about, like I have a, I have an online course if you're interested. Okay, let's see. But the best thing to do is just start sculpting, just start practicing and having fun with it. and. The reason I did that student challenge is to because the most important part, in my opinion, of a character is the block out because it's the foundation. It's the if if you don't have a good block out, you really don't have anything. So and no no amount of nice rendering or texturing is gonna make that thing look any better. Oh, thanks, 3D art. Um, so, I this is actually my webcam, and for my for my actual videos, I'm re, I'm re-recording the 3D character workshop, and I'm I'm kind of reorganizing everything, and I'm wanting to up the production value, and that's what this lighting is all about. And I have a a fancy camera just right there. Um, I'm not shooting through it right now. I'm just shooting through my regular webcam, but. This is the same lighting, the same background. I actually have some LEDs back here and stuff. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, let me, and yes, this is just a sphere head right now. What's up, sphere head? Because I'm just getting the geometry in place and then I'll, I'll figure it out later. Um, might try something. With this ear, I just want to try one thing. I'm going to duplicate this and split it off. I wonder what would happen if I do a live boolean and cut this out like, like this to kind of get that bowl cut shape out of here. Cheating, I love it. <laughs> From Tunisia, Tunisia. Hello, welcome. For production, you would use a base mesh? Uh, not necessarily. You can, there's so many different ways to start. Um, I prefer blocking out my characters unless I have a character that is very similar to other characters in the production. So. When I was working on Disney Infinity, we had some base meshes and we would share them amongst each other and we would start with those, so yeah. We would definitely use base meshes there. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna edit this ear and just kind of push it in. Hey, Julie's Art. Hey, thanks so much. Glad you can too. OK. 
Okay, so with this, I'm going to move the... It's so crazy working with live Boolean. When you're kind of working blindly a little bit, I'll clean that up in a minute. Okay. Do you need to Dynamesh to make the live Boolean come into effect? Uh, no, but I'll, I'll show you how to make it work here in a minute. Um, you use full, well, you, there's two ways to do it, but the way I like to do it is you, by using folders and you can stick everything that you want to actually make a live Boolean. You put them all into a folder. And then if you right click on that folder, it'll give you uh, the the bo make make boolean opportunity or ah, I can't talk today. <laughs> it'll give you a make live boolean option. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so but for now, I'm gonna turn live boolean off for a moment because I want to define some poly groups through the eyes here. I'm not sure this is going to work. Whoops, by doing this, uh, I need a mask pen. Um, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't know how well this is gonna work. We'll see. <laughs> so, I'm just getting my, my loops and my groups and everything working to basically start making this guy. Then I'll make a, I'll give him a mask right here, an eye mask. Oop. Okay. And then I'll do one more ring around his mouth. And then we'll probably do, we might do this again after we combine the nose. We'll see. Okay, now we have our loops. Now essentially you can put this in a folder by hitting Command F or uh, Alt F and so just say, I'll just call it face, sure, whatever, head. And then you put the subtracting object in there with it. So right now I have a folder and I have um, I have the, the head and the subtraction thing. So I can turn live boolean back on and I'm gonna save this before we do this in case it messes up. Okay, so let's call this, um, I'll call it goblin. Okay, so now we have this and it's being live boolean. So uh, if I right click on this folder, actually it's not right click, it's in this gear. So in this gear, and you can say Boolean folder right here. And then if you have subdivisions like uh, uh, dynamic subdivisions, if you have this button on the left turned on, you can hit this and it will, keep, it will take your subdivisions into um, effect when you do that. So I'm just gonna do Boolean folder, which will Boolean these things together and it'll actually append a new uh, subtool right here. And you can just select this one. Now it's all, it's all, it's it's an alternative way to do a remesh by union as well. So it does a remesh by union. It does a boolean. You can see that these things are stitched together. The nose is now stitched to the head, and we are one step closer to Z remeshing. But it looks like I have some rogue groups right here. I I want that red as part of the blue. So I'm gonna uh, mask that, invert mask it, and make sure this, oops, I need to turn on symmetry. Okay, and then hit Control W. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna go back and hit Control W again because I want a different color. I wanna make sure the polygroup color is, is way different than the red. So I'm gonna do that again with this green. Yeah, that works. Okay. You just want to make sure that the values are not similar. 
Okay, and then this is way thin now that it's been booleaned out of here. So I'm gonna use the inflate brush. Before I do a Z remesh, I just kind of inflate this ear. Not with like not with Sculptures Pro though. Inflate this ear just so it's not so stinking thin. Okay, I'm gonna save it one more time. Place it. Okay. And then we'll we'll try, let's do a duplicate. Hide the original and then Z remesh this. Okay, Z remesh, keep groups. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with target polygon count five and we'll try that. Can you please show how the Z project brush works? Z project brush. I don't know that I'm gonna be using that brush. Okay, so this is a this is an example of what I was talking about. It, it happened kind of twice here, where the inside of the ear and the head, it it's uh it's merged those two groups together, which I really don't want. And this outer mouth ring and the interior of the mouth are are both the same poly group as well, and I don't necessarily want that, so I'm gonna undo it, and then I'm going to put this in its own group, and I'm going to give the mouth ring a better color, like this. Okay, so now that those colors are definitely different, Let's Z remesh again. Um, I kind of want to Z remesh. I want to give these nostrils a little group too. Uh, come on, better. There we go. Let's see if it gives me a ring around those nostrils. Okay, so Z remesh. Did uh, did YouTube streaming go offline? Okay. Okay, so now that we have this Z Z remeshed, now we can come in here and just kind of smooth it out and clean everything up and we have our ears and we have our roundish face. <laughs> Comics legend. I was like, "What?" <laughs> okay. No worries. No worries. It happens. As long as you don't accidentally like give people your bank account numbers and whatnot you know you're good <laughs> okay so now that we have these all merged and we have our poly groups and uh, all of that stuff now we can essentially just shape this guy's head um I didn't give him a neck which I probably should have oh awesome he also has a, I found it on a on Tumblr. So right here, this address is, uh, Cis, I don't know if it's Cecil or Cecilia or something. His his or her uh, you, Tumblr is here. That's why I put that up there. But thank you for finding his uh, Instagram. Yeah, great stuff. Okay, so a neck. I'm actually gonna go back in time before we get going, just to right here, and I want to add that neck in. It's got a big old thick neck. Um, I might just put another sphere here. Do it that way. It's funny, he's like Mr. Spherehead. Hello, Mr. Spherehead. Okay, and I'm just gonna flatten this bottom with the clip curve brush. Like so, and then what I can do is I can uh, poly group that bottom. Let me go solo this and click on group by normals. 
Did it not work? Go by normals. No. Okay. Maybe not. I think I'm going to have to isolate this. Okay. Hmm. Maybe more. Go up here. There we go. That's better. Put that in a group just so it'll keep that group when it goes around. Okay. So uh, now I need to stitch this together, but I want to get it this kind of a similar uh, density. So it's like more dense. Um, but what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to separate it. So split to unmask points, which puts it in a new subtool, and then subdivide it a couple times, twice. And then get rid of the lower subdivision levels and now it's more dense without me having to go do some tricky like sculptures pro stuff you know i can just subdivide it now it's kind of in the same realm of density as that okay then i can merge them back together merge down like so and um now we can stitch them together no problem so if you go to gizmo and you have to reset it i usually send it home by holding option or alt hitting this home and then pushing this one and going into the gear and then just put pushing remesh by union which will stitch it together like this and then you just say accept and then remember to turn symmetry back on after you're done and now we're all stitched together. Now we can do a Z remesh on it and he has a neck. So let's do that now. Um, I'm actually gonna go up. Now that we've added this neck, I want more polygons. So I'm gonna go up to an eight. And that means 8,000. Enable to open file. That's weird. ZBrush has given me problems here. I'm going to duplicate this, save it. Okay, let's go. Because when you Z remesh, what happens is it does some behind the scenes stuff. Users, shared ZBrush data, temp OBJ out. Huh. Let me look at that, because that's not good. I want to rename this. Uh, goblin head and see if it does it. If it's renamed something else. Because it might not be able to overwrite it. Okay, hold on a second. Users finder. Sorry, it's not, it's having a hard time overwriting this file in temp so i was just going to try and delete it but i got to go find it first <laughs> what a what a pain kind of a pain okay come on exit full screen for a minute go to my finder hey harry how's it going man Okay, I gotta do it one more time so it'll show me what, what's going on. Um, Z remesher. You doing it? Come on. Do it, do it. Okay. I copy this. Sorry about this, guys. Little hiccup here. OBJ out. Ugh, can't find it. Great. 
Well, shoot. Okay, well. No, I just, I switched to a Mac recently um, for video editing. And I've been, it's kind of changed to my full, my main machine because I like it so much. I don't know why. But I keep running into little uh, gotchas like this that I don't, it's, um, so Macs are very kind of closed as far as like, um, you know, like privacy and stuff like that. That's why they don't get very many viruses. You have to accept everything and all that. And sometimes you'll run into these little problems like this. So um, I'm going to save this and restart ZBrush really fast and see if I can get it to work with a different file. Yeah, I could save it in another place, I guess. Let's save it to the desktop, shall we? Ah, uh, sure. So basically what's happening is when you hit ZRemesher, it will export a temporary OBJ to a temporary folder location. And it's, it's having a hard time overwriting that. So I don't think it matters where I'm saving this. It's the temp OBJ that's not being able to be saved. I'm sure it's a permissions thing, but I'm not, sh I'm not positive, but that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so I'll have to ask about that and see what's going on. But let me, let me shut this down really fast. All right, oops, not, yes. No. Okay, one second. Shut this. Okay. Back, we're fast. Come on, shut this down and load it. Okay, hopefully this will work. Remesher. Nope. Oh goodness. Yeah, I did. I closed ZBrush and reset it, but it's not working. ZBrush data. I want to look for that. Okay, found the folder. Temp. Okay. Object dot out. Hmm. This is what I'm looking at, just so you know. It's like these temporary settings and data settings and that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. I'll get it. I'll figure it out. I think it might be this GoZ thing. OBJ. All right, I'm just going to toss it in the trash and try it. Nope. Gosh dang it. Come on. Remesh settings, da, da, da. it's back, look at that. It's like, I'm not leaving, I'm not going away. So we're in the folder that it that pops up and says there's an error. I'm just gonna try and delete all of this. Because it's in a temp folder, so I'm, I am moved to trash is just temporary. So hopefully I can get this done. Come on, baby. <laughs> oh my gosh they're back no all right i'm gonna have to ask paul about that like why why on earth is it not working it's kind of a big deal i want to check and see if i open up another tool um if i have the same problem so this is the guy i was working on last week and i had no problem z remeshing him so i'm just going to duplicate this head and see what happens if I Z remesh it. Problem solving, guys. <laughs> but this is subdivided, so it might take a minute. Looks like it's working, though. All right. Yeah, it looked like it worked. So, um, why isn't this working? Um, I'm going to, let's see, 
what can I do here? Try this one more time. I might, I'm gonna append it into this head, okay? So when you append something, it's essentially going to grab something from another Z tool and pull it in. So I can hit append, grab this goblin head like this, and then go down, it's at the very bottom. Now it's in this file, okay? And I'll try and Z remesh it here. Yeah, it worked. No, it didn't. Son of a biscuit. Is it too... What is going on with this thing? Let me try and decimate it. Da -da -da -da. Not asking. Okay. I'll try it again. Because it probably had, it, you know what? It probably had some non-manifold geometry in there. Non-manifold means um, either hidden geometry or geometry that's crossing each other, geometry that's not solid. Um, basically, yeah, I was, so Grim, essentially DynaMeshing would do the same thing. It's, it's basically rebuilding the mesh. Something was wrong with that mesh, why it wouldn't Z-Remesh, so. Um, yeah, figured it out. So let's go back to, let's go back to this guy, do it again. Back to the original file. Problem solving, here we go. <laughs> yeah, fix mesh. I, you know, there's a whole bunch of different ways to try and fix the mesh. Like you could do close holes, you could do, but I bet there was some kind of a rogue little cluster of triangles in there somewhere. That's kind of what happens with Sculpt Sculptus Pro sometimes, is it makes little mesh clusters. See, I thought it was a file permissions thing, but it wasn't. Oh man, this was a better result. I'll just keep this, I guess. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Uber, right? Well, I'm glad you guys are still sticking around watching me, watching me suffer through the, th through the problem solving, so. I hoped you learned something through that, and thanks for sticking around. I always worry that when I start to problem solve, people go away, because it's not as entertaining, but it's, it's very, very uh, worth it to problem solving when your modeling is, I think it's a good 30% of what you're doing. Now he looks like Clown Goblin. Okay, let's, let's import that texture again. Um, this one. You know, I was doing, I, I did some tutorials for a certain website that I'm, I'm not going to name, but um, they, they wanted me, so I, I would run into some problems like, like this when I was doing my characters, and I would talk my way through them and problem solve them and, and teach people how to get out of the problems, and this, uh, this company wanted me to pull the problems out and make it look like it's just this seamless, nice thing every single time, which luckily for me, it's been that way most of the time when I stream here on Pixelogic's live stream. But um, sometimes you just run into stuff and you got to figure it out. So it's not it's not always uh, the perfect, you know, the, the perfect thing that you see every time. So let me move this to full screen. Thanks, Neil. All right. I was like, why isn't it? I, I didn't have the move brush either. So, right, right. Just getting rid of and like not seeing the problems. That's just like, what? That's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> not fair. Okay, it looks like these loops are, are pretty good here. And we're into it 39 minutes so far. I'm pretty happy about that. All right, I think I'm going to move this. Yeah. It's too, too long. I guess I'll park it over my silhouette for a moment. That's okay. Even I, I don't know about the best, Kevin, but thanks. Yeah, uh, honestly, I was just talking to a student the other day. And even though I've been doing this for like over 20 years, 
I still get pages of notes when I'm doing characters for a client. It's not like I submit perfect characters every single time. That's that's opposite of true. So um, yeah, I, I will get almost as many pages of notes now as I did when, well, not when I was first starting out, but you know, a couple years into it, I, it because you're, you're essentially trying to uh, fit the character that you're working on into either the toy line or the game line that you're doing the freelance or the work for, and they need to make, ensure that your character is going to fit in that lineup, right? So, um, <laughs> a friend, friend shaped goblin for sure. Okay, so let's get some let's get some better shapes in here, and get rid of and hide the stuff. Okay, so let's now that we have our geometry, let's start making him hopefully look better. Yeah, more experience is probably a better way to put it, for sure. Let's turn on topological. Just working on closing this mouth a little bit. And then we need, I didn't do a very good job of making the dude's head the shape I wanted in the beginning, which is not the best way to go about it, but. Push these eyes in and pull the brows out. <laughs> yeah, it's like, get over here, silhouette. Arr, 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 arr. Nom, nom, nom. Smooth out this neck connection and then give it some rolls too. <laughs> See what we got here. Hopefully that will work. He's kind of got this chin strap roll. It comes from here down. And his chin, it's funny, his chin is big here. But then it gets kind of jammed into his throat down here. It looks a little different right there. And then it's almost gone on this one. So I need to kind of find a, a happy medium place to put it. What's the latest on you running your own Twitch stream? Um, you know, Phantom, I'm actually thinking about doing my own YouTube channel and not necessarily my own stream. So, um because I want to, I don't want to be tied to it and I want to kind of put out more, more content, pre-recorded videos, that kind of stuff. So be looking for that and just kind of some varied, uh, varied stuff and maybe some time lapses. Then I can get more done in a shorter amount of time in a video instead of just the live streams. And I might do a Patreon too, I'm not sure. Like with the, the longer videos instead of time lapses, but. I'm still trying to decide where all, how all that fits. Yeah, so I've, I've kind of been doing these busts on purpose. I think I, I went a little too far time-wise on some of those, uh, those longer streams that I've done in the past. So um, I want to do more of those, but not necessarily, you know, on live stream. It just takes too long. Let's see. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just takes a while. <laughs> And I kind of get run out of run out of steam on it, honestly, with you know with live streaming it. Um, and I don't know how how fun they are to watch in particular, but okay, let's get some eyes in there. Got 
might work. I don't know if those are big enough, but. Now he's he's part of my part of last week's uh, character now. See, <laughs> he's in there, too. So if I unsolo, everything's going to still be there. So that's kind of funny. Um, I'm going to go through and delete all of these pieces and then save it again. Let's do delete. Where I get them all. There we go. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> Those dinosaurs. Yeah. Okay, unsolo this. And I also I bought uh I bought a 3D printer and I want to print more characters out. You can see them back here in my in my camera. I don't know, I think you can. Back there. So, and those those were printed with a form 2 and I just barely picked up a form 2. So I'm excited to get more characters. built and printed. Okay. Ah, should have been paying attention to my geometry here. Pushing, a, pushing the eyeball clear out <laughs> where I don't want it. I need it to be like this. So these rings were kind of made this way on purpose. I need to keep them that way if I can help it. Uh, because I found a good deal on the Form 2 and the Form 3 is still a tiny bit buggy even though the technology is better. Um, but it, they both use the same um, resin, so there's not an updated resin. And they, the Form 3 does use laser technology rather than uh, photo technology, so it's, it is better that way. But I found this one for like 1200 bucks, whereas a Form 3 is close to four grand. So um, I saved quite a bit by not getting a Form 3, <laughs> even though I would like one. I'm just kind of straightening this stuff out. Yeah, thanks. It was it was used at a a place locally here that made um that made parts for us like startup companies. There's like this little in incubator startup company place. It's kind of like those incubation companies in San Francisco. Um, and they had a 3D printing department and they were updating all of their printers to Form 3s so they wanted to get rid of their Form 2s and I just saw it on a on a local marketplace here and I had to pick it up, so, yeah. And um, luckily I know, what, you know, some of the people who work at Form 3, some of the employees, or Form 3, Form Labs, uh, I know some some people there, they actually printed most of my characters here for me when I go to the ZBrush Summit. Um, and his, his name's Jake, fantastic guy, and uh, he's been helping me get set up, and yeah, pretty cool. Um, I also bought a Photon, the Photon, because it was like 230 bucks. The Photon, it's, let's see, where, it's right here, hold on a second. So this is the build plates. So if you look at the build plate, it's like that big. So it's perfect if you want to print like miniatures for D and D and stuff like that, or Warhammer. Um, but the printer itself is is pretty small. And the form the form two I just have sitting on the floor right here. You can't see it, but um, I because I'm right in the middle of rearranging my office, so I'm trying to set things up. 
but now I have I have the two printers I need to figure out what to do with the photon now that I have the form 2 I don't know if I'm going to keep it or sell it or what but because it's it's a little um I've heard I haven't printed anything with it yet but I've heard it's on the on the stinky side so or the form 2 is is not as stinky I know the I'm sure the resin is just as toxic Uh, will you be putting up videos growing through the whole process from modeling to print then paint and assembly um i do in my course but i won't be doing i won't be um because i i don't want to be giving that stuff away because that's how i make my living so i'll be doing that inside the inside my course for sure which i already do but i want to do more of it Okay. Yeah, the my course is my full-time job, so that's what I do. Okay. Still think you should print your ruler and paint it up and take it to the Z-Bar Summit? Hey, that's not a bad idea. And Vec, am I going to do all four expressions? I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't know. I'll, I, I want to try at least one of them. Greetings from Columbia. Welcome. Okay. I want to get some... These aren't the best rings going around his eyes. I want to get some eyelids in here. And they're pretty... They're pretty small eyelids. You can... <laughs> Tastier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, resin. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can kind of munge this stuff around. That's a real word, right? Munge. Official. I'm just looking for more geometry to use for these eyelids, so that's why I'm just pushing this out. Ah, the bot says go get the updated ZBrush. Scooch him. Yep. I know tweak is an official word, but I like I like making up words. Scooch. Munge. They're all the same thing. Uh, is it standard for all 3D artists to use pen displays? No. But it's standard for 3D artists or any artists that use computers to use a tablet of some sort. But you don't necessarily need a, a pen, a, a display tablet. And they'll they're they won't make you a better artist, they'll just make you faster. That's my opinion. Anyway. So don't feel like you have to have a Cintiq to be a better artist, because that's just not true. Okay, let's see. And the reason why it makes you faster as an artist is because you just don't, um, mathematically, you don't have to do as many strokes. Because since it's one to one, there's no, you know, you're not, you don't have a tablet down here and you're looking at a screen up there. That's, that's not a direct contact with what you're working on. So sometimes, even with lazy mouse turned on, sometimes you have to do your stroke several times to get what you want. And with a Cintiq, it's one-to-one, -one, so you don't have to do as many strokes to get to where you need it to be. Other than that, 
it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, just the biggest thing is just to have something that has uh, pressure sensitivity. You don't want to be sculpting with a mouse. Uh, no, I wish. I wish. It's it's not pos possible to uh, re just remesh the eye area. I wish. It, you have to redo the whole thing. So, um, I so I'll I'll just kind of work with this geometry, um, as best as I can until I get it as far as I can, and then eventually I will. Uh, if it was full production model, I would eventually retopologize it by hand anyway. So that's why I'm not really caring about the geometry too much. Um, the rings just help keep it low resolution while allowing me to, uh, to munge it around. <laughs> Yep, Intuos are just, they're just fine. Just uh, get what you can afford, as long as it's not just a mouse. It's like, it's like Shrek. This guy's like Shrek. <laughs> it needs, needs those little weird alien ears. Okay, let's shape these ears. They're not really shaped properly. The connection point to the head is actually quite small. Maybe not that small. Then they kind of get wider. and then down to a point. This is this would be good for the snake hook brush. <laughs> yeah, and it's true. I actually have a lot of a lot of lingo that I use in my course and my my uh students they I think they like it. Like I say hand meat for this kind of stuff because I don't really care what it's called. You just need to know that it's there, you know, and like eye meat. That's like this, this stuff in, above your eye. <laughs> yeah, I have fun. I have fun with it. You're an artist, not a, not a doctor. You just need to know it's there and how it works. Okay, I'm gonna pull this down. Yeah, and the reason I say meat because it's kind of a universally you know what meat kind of is. <laughs> Whoops. Oh man, I'm just making this Warble City. Welcome to Warble City. That's another one, Warbles. I kind of want to turn these ears a lot. Sometimes, see, that's, that's another problem with streaming like this. Um... Because if I wasn't streaming, I would approach this a lot slower and more calculated. When I'm streaming, I feel like I'm, I'm a bit rushed just to get something done in the short amount of time that I'm doing it in. Whoops. That's not what I want to do. So, um, like with these ears, I probably would have kept them separated for longer. to make sure that I have, uh, that's not gonna work. But I have them where I want before connecting them. <laughs> For sure. 
yeah, it kind of describes all those things, Ian. All the above. Okay, I want to make these thicker. Well, maybe I'll just pull the front of it down, like like this ear right here. No, not the back. This area here. See, it's if you have too much geometry, it's kind of, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to avoid those warbles. You have to keep smoothing it out and, okay. Hey, what's up, Dan? Yeah, yeah, I finally got it working. Finally got it working. This is, I like this because it's more like Bob Ross style, you know? He's got his, like, canvas up here, and he's looking at the camera like this. It's it's more like you're you're in here watching me and, and that kind of stuff, rather than a floating head. I don't, I'm not a big fan of floating heads. They scare me. <laughs> okay. Pull this mouth back. <laughs> Spamming the links. Okay, I'm going to give him a bit of an underbite. Like all good goblins and trolls have. <laughs> Streams are very soothing, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. The mic helps. The deep voice helps. Um, too much. Let's go. I really want to see this like fat chin line coming from the sides of his mouth. We really want that in there. He was a floating head. <laughs> You're not talking about like Aladdin, right? What do you mean? Here's the genie. The genie's head floated for a second. Hey, Jose, how's it going? I am in my new, this is my new house. Yep, yep. I'm no longer in the temp place. This is the new, the new gig. Oh, live action? Huh. I'm not sure. He was in so many movies. Make his nose just a little wider here. Okay. Let's get some brows and stuff. That's that's really gonna make it. Then make his shoulders not so rounded. And up here. Something like this. So was that it? The Adventures, I've never heard of that. Make his shoulders wider. Okay. Let's, um, I want to color him up just to get some color going on here. Right, 
I'm going to grab some of this shadow color and just kind of work it, work in some fake ambient occlusion a bit. It is, and he's a floating head. What is that? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Interesting. I'm gonna have to go check that out. Okay, let's bring his eyeballs or brows up. A lot more space between his eyes and his brows. And yes, he's in his expression most of the time, but I need them higher than what they are now. And he doesn't have a top of his head. It's kind of... It just kind of sweeps and goes back, so. And then he's got a very, very narrow upper head, so I'm gonna have to adjust the eyes after the fact. Hey, what's up, Un what's up, Angry? How's it going, man? It is m indeed Monday. And I need to get those eyes closer together. Going with yellow. Isn't it crazy how much he changes just when I'm munging stuff around <laughs> changing eye positions I need to work on that eye shape his eyelids are a little too big uh yeah yeah you could totally do that phantom um that's or if because I only have two sub tools really right now I have the eyes and I have his head so if you have multiple sub tools um the T-Pose Master is definitely the way to go if you're going to be making big changes with, like that. Okay. I want this cheek to just kind of flow down around this chin and then be bulbous down here that neck fat yeah for sure I do that all the time if I'm doing like big big changes like that it's funny I keep looking at my my other camera instead of the instead of the webcam but yeah for sure for sure that's a really good way to do large changes or you can just mask out the portion around his eyes and uh use the um what is it called this transpose all selected sub tools as long as you're not sculpting so the tipos mesh allows you to actually sculpt stuff but if you're just transforming you can use that and i i do that all the time. Hey, Mal. Hey, Ica, how's it going? Ica, Ica. No. <laughs> how's it going? Okay, let's get. Uh, let me see. All right. Let me get. I need to fix the geometry here so I can actually use this for coloring. drink here you're gonna have to tell me how to pronounce your name again sometime like uh, <laughs> I feel like I say it wrong no matter what okay so for this let's grab this purple color mm. 
and then invert this and sh let's see sharpen okay it's pretty full sharp and fill it there we go okay Is there a game? I should know this. Okay, let's see. Oh, really? Vertical shooter on Dreamcast. Fill color? Yeah, yeah. So I just, that's what I did with, with that just now. Just used, so I used this hard paintbrush. And these paintbrushes um, I give away for free, by the way. Um, a lot of these brushes down here. That look like this. If you go over to 3dcharacterworkshop.com, you can grab them over there. And that's just a solid paintbrush and then an airbrush. So like a... Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Okay, so let's get some eyebrows on here. These eyebrows are interesting because they're kind of... They're kind of bushy, so... I might do solid eyebrows and then have a few little hairs right here next to the the middle just to make them pretty bushy. Okay. Probably get that nose shape better, but all right. Let me save it. It's not the butler. <laughs> Yep, mask then fill. My, in, when I was in college, my, well, not college, my first job, um, my, my roommate had a Dreamcast and we would play a whole bunch of games on that thing. Like uh, Parappa the Rappa. <laughs> I remember that one. That was Dreamcast, right? I'm trying to remember, it's been a long time. Oh, really? Wow, I gotta go check it out. Okay, let's, let's stick with that. <laughs> yeah. Ikaruga. Let unmask points. Marvel vs. Capcom, Capcom 2. Ah. Okay, I'm just going to make these dark gray for now. While I work on them. So I kind of want to lift them up and away from the head. So they don't wrap perfectly around it. they kind of stand up off the head like this so like they're growing from the brow line and up like uh like grass along a fence kind of oh fantasy star i forgot about fantasy star <laughs> so the one i remember well we played a lot of soul caliber soul caliber um and I would play Ivy, and I can't remember the name of the character he would play, and he would always kick my butt over and over and over again. But <laughs> he, he would play Typing of the Dead. 
you remember that typing of the dead it was like uh these zombies coming after you and you had to type to shoot them and i sucked at typing you know i still look at my fingers when i type but he would play uh muds they're like massive it's like uh, massive on multiplayer online games before like EverQuest or WoW or those kind of things that were called MUDs. And um, they, so he, he learned to type extremely fast, like 99 words a minute. And so when he was playing Typing of the Dead, he'd just be like, <laughs> like a machine gun blowing him away. <laughs> yeah, Ivy's outfit's a bit ridiculous. But the younger me loved it. <laughs> Um, let's see. Can you talk a little bit about the topology brush? That's one I'm still trying to understand. Um, yeah, I'll do. Let's see if I have any more to do. Um, I did talk about it last week quite a bit. So if you want, you can go to, if you want to learn about it right now, you can go to, um, just look up Shane Olson Pixelogic and it's my last stream where I worked on the Butler and I actually talked about that quite a bit. If you want to check that out. Space Channel 5. I actually modeled Ooh La La. She's on my other computer. Or I'd pull her up. Um, yeah, you're a little late. Um, I'm, I'm going for about another 45 minutes here. Okay, I'm going to insert a couple edges here and, ch and cheat. So basically I want um, some faces that I can just pull off and use to make... Um, those little hairs out of. So now I'm going to delete a single poly and just get rid of the ones in between. Kind of cheaty. Should I just scale up the whole character uniformly or just the height or make some of the different body parts taller individually? Um, Yeah, the Robo Butler. Yeah, go watch the end of that one where I'm starting to do the collar and I explain... Um, I, I explained some of that there. Okay. So I want to make a couple of these. Whoop. A little longer, but let's go topological. I don't want to do one more, so let's, there we go. Yeah, it was towards the end there. So if you want to like fast forward down it, you can check it out. Okay. And I also want to bend these hairs uh, forward just a little bit. So I'm going to cut them in half with poly loops just a little bit like this last one yeah oh yeah that ooh la la you can watch yeah i forgot that i did that on during stream so you can watch me make make her if you want oh i for, I, I always forget um i can do uh i can hold down control and then hold down, um, what is it called? Option. I'm still getting used to this Mac. So if I hold down Option, it will make my mask white instead of dark. And then if I let go, it's going to mask everything except for what I'm circling, which is nice. I forgot. Yeah, that mouse. That mouse is actually printed right behind me. Can you see it? can't tell if you can see it. Hold on a second. Yeah, I think so. I just barely, uh, I, I got some really cool, I got some really cool, uh, primer. Um, hold on a second. So this guy, this guy was printed on the form three. You can see. I just, I just primed him. Sorry, I'm not talking into my microphone. I just primed him recently with, it's called uh, Mr. Finishing Surfacer. You can get it off of uh, Amazon, 1500 gray, this thing. 
and it goes on super super smooth i really really like it so yeah that's this guy printing him out form three and this was printed out in white and i hit it with this primer and it worked really well i still need to prime my uh my cowboy the dinosaur riding cowboy there's some um yeah this is resin this is uh this is printed on form three resin so the whiskers were just printed on the form three um they're they're just part of it um they were printed at the same time here let me do this <laughs> so with the actually with the form printer it comes with software that it makes the supports where the actual touch points so small that you can remove them just by brushing them with your finger so it's really not that bad at all um oh the audio went away oh sorry 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 that's so when I switched screens, it didn't have my audio in OBS, but we should be back now. Oh, you like the text? Thanks. Um, so what I was saying was this, um, I sprayed it with this Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Gray is what it's called. You can get it off Amazon. And I just hit it with that. Um, but the, and the whiskers are, they're resin, I, they're printed separately. And I just had a key on them and I just plugged them in. So there's, yeah, Jake from, Jake from Form Labs. <laughs> He's, he helped me key him up for the ZBrush Summit. So yeah, I have that Mars Mouse is on stream too. Any tips on printing a thin cape-like object? Yes, only have it thin around the edges. So in the center, make sure you have it thick enough that it can support itself. And then as it goes to the edges, make it thinner and thinner, and then it will give the illusion of, of being thin when you're, it's actually kind of thicker than it should be in the, in the middle. Because you can't see both sides at the same time, um, usually. So uh, yeah, you can get away with making it a little thicker so it, it holds itself. Okay, so... Hey, what's up, Charlie? How you doing? Okay, so let's uh, Z model this. You use Mars Mouse to demonstrate the Z remeshing with groups. Manipulate the polygroups around the round shapes. Yeah. I've been kind of using this method for a while, but I'm changing it slightly, just experimenting here and there. Not delete. I need to extrude polygroup all. Pull this out. Um, group by normals, crease polygroups. Hit D. There we go. Actually, I'm gonna I'm not gonna crease these. I just want to keep them round, round and soft. Oh yeah, it's been been crazy good. I can't wait to get it all on one page. So. We can see them all together. I'm making a, I'm gonna make a gallery for them. And that, that challenge is gonna be ongoing, so we can continually add to it. Because it was such a success, I don't wanna stop it, you know? Let's inflate. Nice. Okay, let's darken these eyebrows up a bit. With details, is it a tip 
make the details more stronger so the print can print it well? Or is there another way to print details like hair, scar, something like that? Yeah, you'll actually want to exaggerate them more than you would if you were doing it for like a game character or something like that. You really want to punch those details and make them pretty crispy, like pretty, uh, like use creasing and stuff like that to really punch them so it'll print well at that size. And it depends on the size of the character that you're going to print. So if you're going to print something really big, like the pirate girl, she's about this tall, um, you don't need to punch the details as much as if you were doing like a little Warhammer figurine where you will actually exaggerate and scale and push everything pretty hard in order to get it to print at that size. Okay, let's see, now we have his, his eyebrows in. Keep wanting to scooch them closer together. Scooch, scooch. Yeah. Okay, and now I want to add some more. This is getting really chunky. So I'm gonna go in and add some more edge loops here. Not what I wanted. Okay, now let's kind of smooth this out a little bit. There we go. That's pretty good. Can you see the reference with the white silhouette in the corner? Yes, I can. <laughs> so I can, and I, I can move it out of the way too, so you can see that silhouette if it's bugging. But see, then it comes, it, it's too far into my, um, into my real estate. So I take it out. All right. Um, Let's grab this face again, this clown guy. I want to give him some, he's got these dark lips. Make sure he's got these dark lips and I might put another edge loop in here to support it. Oh, come on. There we go. Maybe one on this side. Come on. Maybe a smaller. There it goes. Like, why aren't you working? Okay. That's just so I can color these lips. I actually want to do the band. Maybe one band out from this color one edge loop out. So let me hide this and well, let me hide these rings and give this a new poly group. Oh, come on. There. Control W, Control w will uh, give a new poly group to visible. Um, yeah, I always retopo anyway. This is not the best retopology, or this is not the best topology. This is just sculpting topology. This will not animate very well. I mean, it would, but I mean, it would animate, but not well. Your riggers would hate you. <laughs> Slit your throat in the night. Okay.
Okay, I'm gonna, um... We've almost hit a 200 people watching, that's great. Okay, I'm going to give him some... some dark lips, but I actually want to... make a polygroup out of these. So it's just this ring. So maybe... In order to do that, what you can do is just isolate. As long as you can isolate, like this, one, two, three, and that can be his lips, and just invert selection, hit Control w a couple times, and those are his lips now. And I want to slide these edges. So with the Z modeler, I can go to Slide, Edge Loop, Complete, and then slide these closer to the edges here. And the reason I do that is because it'll hold the, the poly paint better. So now if I just go bonk, um, I can fill it with that color. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. He's all sad. What's going on? Okay. For some reason, <laughs> it did these loops like this. Okay, let's try this again. Sometimes you have to be fur zoomed further out so you can see what's happening. Okay. Come on. Okay. What is this? Shift. Okay. There we go. Zoom. Zoom. There, that's all I wanted. All right. Gotta run. All right. Thanks for hanging out, Micah. Let's slide this back. Oh, come on. Just slide like you want to. There you go. Now fill it. Okay. Now he's got some dark lips. Slide it like you mean it. Hey, what's up, Pedro? <laughs> See, and it would probably help to do another, another band, another edge loop right here. So let's insert edge loop. Get that closer. Put one right here too for funsies. You can never have too many edge loops. Yeah, you probably can. <laughs> okay. Let's try that one more time. Sorry, I'm just kind of painting these out. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I'm trying to get him into a neutral pose so I can then come back and uh, put him into these expressions maybe later. Hide this no. There we go. That's not going to work. There we go. And this color can be this like dark, dark burgundy red. go that's better then when he gets his teeth in there they'll be contrasty and nice and should work better gotta go work through the modules or else i'll be in the valley yep all right thanks again kevin we'll see you in there
I'm just using inflate to finish closing that mouth up. And he's, his underbite is probably a bit too heavy. I'm gonna pull that in, pull this out. So it's, you can't really see the red. Okay. And I think I might um, put in a cut or a pinch going from his nose down around his mouth just a little bit. Probably won't help a ton, but maybe. Um, and be careful with your smooth because smooth will also smooth out your colors. So if you hold down shift, you can turn off RGB and then it won't blur your colors at this low of resolution. There we go. Okay, let me get some pupils in there and I'm going to raise his brows up just a bit by shrinking them down. No, is there a, kind of something weird back there? But okay, I'm gonna make some pupils for him and some eyelashes. I need to make him some eyelashes. But let's do the pupil first. I'm just gonna make a squash sphere. Um. Kind of squish it and turn it. What I just say about blurry colors? Hey, what's up, John Quinn? How you doing, man? Um, I said um, blur, like smoothing, will also blur colors. So if you sometimes you'll want to do it intentionally, sometimes not. But um, basically, smoothing will blur the colors. Here, I'll turn it back on. So if I hold down Shift. And I turn on RGB color like this, and you hover over a, like a colored edge and start to smooth. Well, I gotta be on the model. Okay. Um, you'll see it'll blur it out like this. See that? So you'll smooth your colors. And sometimes you want that and sometimes not. But um, typically when I have colors with hard edges like this, hard-ish edges, I will... Uh, Hold down shift and turn RGB off. And now when I smooth, it will no longer affect the colors. Hope you're doing well, John. Good to see you. Maybe shrink these down. Local symmetry. All right. Add a squash sphere to your IMM. <laughs> well, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty quick to do. So, gotta push those in a little bit more. Pull these lids back. Something like this. And it's really hard to uh, sculpt from expressions instead of sculpting from... Let's see what's going on here. Ah, okay. Looks like I still have a piece, an eyebrow piece in there. Rogue piece. This guy. Let's delete that. Get out of here. I was like wondering what the heck that was. Awesome, good to hear. All right, 
Looks like I overinflated this. There we go. All right, and then um, I'm going to paint the interior of the ears like that darkish red. I can turn on back face masking. That way it won't affect the other side of the ear. Get better coloring in there. Um... With Models to Print, it doesn't matter if the model mesh is DynaMesh, Decimation, or ZRemesher with the subdivisions, or one of them are more efficient than the others. Yes, one of them is more efficient, and that would be Decimation, because uh, DynaMesh is very, very dense, so your files will be big, and your com computational time when you send it over to the printer is going to be way, way longer uh, decimation is kind of like an optimization pass and it will optimize the entire mesh. You'll actually want to do both because DynaMesh will get rid of all of the interior geometry and fuse everything together um, because you want a watertight mesh when you 3D print. And then DynaMesh will uh, optimize it and reduce it down to triangles. And then you export that to go print. And you don't want to use subdivision surfaces for the same reason. So yeah, um, Decimation. So decimation is what you want. Hopefully I said that right. This guy's fun. Okay. Um, let's see what do we got. 142, about 15 minutes. Um, okay, let me give him some eyelashes. I'm gonna turn him to the side like this. Still getting used to these uh, hotkeys on this Mac. Uh, let's see here, maybe just like this. Usually I'll make my eyelashes larger than they need to be because if you get the two lines too close, then sometimes they'll touch each other and make a new point and that's not what you want. Oops, come on. There we go. And then put my draw size to one. Tap on the surface, there we go. Split to unmask points. Arrow down to select that subtool. And we can color it black. There we go, and turn on transparency to see where that thing is. And just adjust it so it's not embedded in the head and we can make it so it does, does a thick to thin we want so it's not so thick down here this will also help define the eye shape it's like outlining it kind of like the they do in the cartoons and it helps with the expression and stuff like that and sometimes I'll stick the eyelash right up against the eyeball and sometimes I'll leave the eyelid ledge there in this case I'm gonna leave the ledge and see what it looks like but usually if you have a really bright bright skin tone um, and you leave that little eyelid ledge if it's not a realistic character it can look weird um, so it just kind of depends all right, let's extrude this. Okay, it's already on there. And then I just want to re kind of shape this a little better.
Had a pretty good turnout today. Hey from Barcelona, how's how's it going? And sometimes I'll keep the creases on to keep it sharp, and sometimes I'll make them soft. It depends on the look I'm going for. I haven't decided on this guy yet. Let's see what happens if I uncrease it at everything. It's kind of softer. It's not bad. Just kind of uh, press those into the head a bit. There we go. All right, and I think I want to pull just the color down on these a little bit like this. to help that mask shape. And I think these eyes change a lot with the expression. So I don't want to like try and make it this shape or this shape or any, I'm just trying to make it as neutral as possible. Until I actually do pose him. I might pose him next, during the next session. Maybe we'll do a couple expressions and see if we can make him really dynamic. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> make him Swiss as possible. What does that mean? <laughs> like, a, like a pocket knife, like as many things as he can be. Neutral. Oh, I get it. Neutral. Ah, duh. Missed that one. Sorry. <laughs> Neutral. All right, that connection point. Maybe a little high, I don't know. And his, his eyes still feel too far apart, so I'm going to push them together more. See, they're, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think they just need to be a little bit closer. So let's do this. Neutral, neutral here. I don't know if this guy's a troll or what. I just found the design and I liked it, so thought I'd give it a model. <laughs> okay, and this and then this. All right, so let's push these just a little bit closer. Ah, I think that looks better. All right. Yeah, sorry, I missed. I missed the pun. <laughs> Punny. Okay. And... Let's get this head shape. I'm not liking the head shape back here as much. I want to keep that pointy-headed shape language happening. And then I need to build his teeth too. Okay. Save it. <laughs> the bat anesthesia. I haven't seen that forever. It's been a it's been a while. Good while. Okay. Um teeth. Teeth and tongue. We got a little bit of time left, about 10 minutes, so let's just build build some just to start, see how far we can get. 
Um, let's grab the color first. So the insert multi mesh will take on any color you currently have active. So if you have the color that you want first, then you don't have to fill it later because it's already there. So I'm just basically squishing a sphere down. <laughs> the... <laughs> All right. Let's split to unmask points. Now, if I go back to this head, what you can do to kind of see inside of the mouth is just kind of make it um, kind of chop in there if you want, like this. <laughs> Oops, not what I wanted to do. that and you can just kind of see how far b back his mouth cavity goes right there and what how the tongue is fitting in there um, you can use transparent as well but it's not as doesn't work as well and then I need to adjust the mouth cavity to, to hold the tongue better and actually have a space for the teeth to rest on. And I could possibly go into more detail with this uh, throat, actually make the throat back here. If I decide to do this um, pose where he's shouting, which I might, because it's pretty dynamic and cool. Okay, so I'm gonna get at least one tooth in there to start with. So grab the color from it. I'm gonna actually start, let's see. You can also use polygroups to help you just hide everything but that polygroup. And I can actually draw a tooth on that polygroup if I want to. I'm gonna grab this. Yep, and done. <laughs> Ship it, print it, wrap it. Time we go. Okay. Just kind of stick it in his head and shape his teeth. What we can do is here. Let's split split to unmask points again. Oh, it's partially hidden. Okay, fine. I need to pull it out of his mouth now so I can see him. I'm going to do it this way. Okay, now I can split and unmask points. Okay, I want to use the clipping brush to shape these, but if I go across the center line with the clipping brush, it's going to, um, it's not going to work because it's basically gonna take everything that's on the shaded side of that line and, and smash it down to that uh, white dotted line. If, so if I let go, you'll see it just disappears because it's smashing it. So what I need to do is delete one of them or get rid of one of them. So I'm gonna turn off symmetry and I'm gonna get rid of, whoops. Get rid of this guy. Delete hidden. So now I can just work on this one and now go back to this clip cut brush, which should be called the smash brush. Oops, I don't want to mask it. There we go. So I'm essentially just giving it um, not round edges. And you can move this line by holding down spacebar. Then I can just clip off the top. Now it's kind of a more square tooth like this one. And now when you're all done, you can just go mirror and weld. Oops, 
Make sure you turn lo local symmetry off first. Do mirror and weld. There we go. Now we can push this back into the head. Can't really see it. Sometimes I'll like to build uh, the gums first, so then I have places to put the teeth, and the gums will align themselves, or you know, I'll, I'll mold the gums to fit in the mouth first before I go putting all the teeth in there. All right. So we've got a couple teeth. I'll just duplicate them around and flip them around, stuff like that. So, all right. I think this is a good a good stopping point. Um, so let me hide. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to hide that and give, um, put this in perspective. I can put some shiny material or whatever on him. We'll see. But <laughs> there he is in perspective. So um, anyway, thanks guys for watching today. Um, this I was worried at the beginning that this guy wouldn't turn out very well, but you just keep kind of pushing through and, and hopefully it tur turns out looking good. <laughs> but um, I think he'll look way, way better once he's in a pose, once he has an expression happening. So, um, and if you want my custom user interface for ZBrush or my custom brushes, feel free to go, to go grab them for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I also have a online workshop if you're interested in learning how to sculpt characters like this. And if you're wanting to know the entire process from start to finish, I teach the whole process and I'm in the middle of recording a 3D Character Workshop 2.0, so I'm gonna be updating it um, hopefully soon. And uh, so watch, watch for that. Um, and if you have any questions whatsoever, you can go on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. The very bottom right-hand side, there's a little chat thing. So if you have any questions about the course or anything like that, you're uh, welcome to ask me any questions. Um, and there's a, here, I'll show you. Well, I can't. Um, if you go to the website, there's a button that says 3D Character Workshop. If you click on that, it'll actually, you can watch the presentation. I tell you all about it. So if you'd like to uh, check that out, um, it'll and it'll answer all of your questions um, and yeah so thank you so much for joining me I will be back next Monday with probably a new bust a new character um, actually not I take that back I'll probably be posing this guy because I really want to pose him in some of those uh, some of those those expressions so thanks everybody for hanging out have a great week and we'll see you next Monday all right cheers we'll see you